Well, everybody, I'm back, and you better put your seatbelt on. You better get excited. You better get out your notebook and your notepad or your iPhone because your life would be radically changed. You know, when I first started the show, one of the things that God really downloaded to me was every week either teach or bring some in, somebody in in a spirit of excellence. So you open up your heart, open up your spirit. Let me just uh, introduce this power for me. And, you know, the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. So we got a baller in the house, y'all. So you better get ready. My special guest is Mike Murphy. He's a man on a mission for sure. He's dedicated his entire life to helping people achieve their dreams and manifest their deepest desires. He is a successful businessman and entrepreneur, and he knows exactly what it takes to be successful uh, he is the author of uh, best-selling books, and I've read one of them, The Creation Frequency, Love and Unfiltered, and Living in Color. He has two powerful courses, The Creation Frequency and The Power of Intention. And we know we talk a lot about intention on this network, and that will really change your life. Uh, he's also the founder of of the Love from Margot Foundation, which he started in 2012 uh, in memory of his late wife, Margot Murphy, who battled cancer. You know, Mike is currently in Columbia and he has all kind of um, nonprofit. He helps people, uh, 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 teenagers and everybody in California, but he is currently uh, really in Columbia where he is, I guess, founding or building Mountain of Hope. So this is a center or retreat that will really help people from all over the world. I might go there myself, y'all, to learn how to unleash their power. So if you want to learn about the crea creation frequency, how to tap into the power of the universe and get exactly what you want, Mike is the man. So Mr. Mike Murphy, welcome to the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show on the Law of Attraction Radio Network. I'm super grateful and super happy to be here with you today, Constance. Well, Mike, you got it going on. You told me you were in Colombia right now. Yes, ma'am. Medellin, okay. Colombia. Okay. And we're building a transformational health retreat center where people can come with some sort of physical, mental, emotional, spiritual issue. We put them through a physical detox. We rewire the neural pathways in the brain, replace bad habits with good habits. We get into the heart, show them how to really open that beautiful heart of theirs, mm -hmm. how to clear away any emotional wounds, because almost every illness is linked to some emotional wound. And as a result of all that work over two weeks, they have a great spiritual breakthrough and they go home and they have a better version of themselves. They create a better family, a better community, and eventually a better world. Wow, you know, I'm always excited, but I, uh, everybody who's watching this or listening to this, I've been living with Mike. He didn't know it for the past week. I've just listened to everything that he shares and just open up your heart. So, Mike, we're going to be talking about the creation frequency. And you know, the first question I'm going to ask you is, Tell our listeners about your journey and the mystery man. Yeah, thank you for asking. You're so that. welcome. So I grew up in an alcoholic home and I was a bit rebellious and I left, I got kicked out of eighth grade and ninth grade. I ran away from home. So I became a habitual runaway juvenile delinquent. I was either living on the street or at home in trouble or in juvenile hall almost until I was, until I was 18. And then mm -hmm. it continued. I was 23. And at 23, I was married with a two month old baby girl and being the habitual runaway, I wanted to go party for a week. I was tired of living with my wife, her parents, <laughs> and her five siblings. And I was mm. a bit I was a bit ashamed and humiliated. So I go, I, I need a break from this. So I didn't even own a car. I loaded all my stuff into a car, took their car, went and party for a week, called her up and said, Hey, I'm ready to come home. She said, No, I'll pass. So so we ended up getting divorced. And and I was in so much emotional pain, I couldn't stop drinking, I couldn't stop using drugs. I'm in a 12 step program. And a buddy says to me, hey, man, you're a total mess, but I know somebody might be able to help. And mm -hmm. when I wrote my first book, Love Unfiltered, I couldn't even remember the man's name. 
Turns out his name was Doug Fitzgerald. I've done a lot of research since writing The Creation Frequency. But he was a recovering alcoholic. He was studying, studying Silva mind control. And, and he taught me this process of manifestation like it's never been taught before. Even to this day, I've never seen it taught this way. And it's using the power of your sound, your voice, your getting into self-hypnotic trance, theta brainwave state. And believe me, it, everybody's already doing this. I don't have to tell you this. You know, everybody's, uh, every, everything in everybody's physical reality started with a thought with an emotion linked to it. And that's how everything comes into the physical world. So everybody's using this. They just don't use it with intentionality or consciously. And therefore, they don't create the life of their dreams. So, so this Mr. Man told you, tell listeners what he yeah. taught you uh about intention and emotions etc and i was telling mike mike knew this back in 1982 and i jokingly said to him i didn't know anything about the theta state of frequencies all i knew was my good old baptist church but in my heart of heart i, I knew there was more so walk us through what he taught you about intention so he, he said to me he said mike you come here one hour a week for seven weeks and i promise you'll get everything you want in your life Oh, and by the way, it's $50 an hour. Okay. And I didn't have 50 cents, but right. I figured out, I figured out how to come up with the money. And he said, listen, you need to create a balanced life. So we're going to break your life into six areas. So my job, career, money, finances, mm -hmm. relationship, contribution, health, all these kind of things. Right. And then he said something very important. He said, there's no difference between imagination and reality. So he says, what do you want most in your life? I said, man, I, I am heartbroken. I've been divorced for two years. I don't want some other jerk raising my daughter. I want mm -hmm. my wife back, but she hates my guts. He says, okay, let's write an intention as if it already exists. And I'll never forget this. I'm sitting at this man's kitchen table and I start writing, Lisa and I are so happily married. Our daughter, Michelle, thrives in this wedding. Now, this now I know the woman hates my guts, okay? I know mm -hmm. I'm a jerk, and I, she, she has every right to. But as I'm writing this, all of a sudden, I start to feel strange, but I get a little bit of hope, okay? Next week, what do you want, Mike? I want to own my own business. Next week, I want to own my own house. Next week, I want to make $10,000 a month. Next week, I want to run a marathon. Next week, he goes, next week is on me. It has to be a contribution goal because you have to pay it forward. You have to give back. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, my dad was a troubled youth. I'm a troubled youth. How about a home for a troubled youth? So those are the six intentions. Week seven is the magic sauce. And that's when he comes in and he says, okay, today's the big day. And he brings out a boom box. Now, you're not nearly as old as me, but you might recall that's how we used to listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> and so he puts in a cassette tape with theta brainwave music and he starts playing this on his boom box. Then he hands me a two page relaxation script. I already have my six intentions written out. And they're only one or two paragraphs each. They're not very long and they're handwritten. And then he hands me a microphone attached to a tape recorder with a blank cassette tape in it. And he says, okay, I want you to, while I play this state of brainwave music, I want you to read this relaxation script, which basically you're putting yourself in a self-hypnotic trance. And then your powerful six intentions written as if they already exist can pierce the conscious mind, get into the subconscious mind, because that's where all the superpower is. And now you can start to change your life. So I leave there seven weeks later, $350 poorer with a cassette tape with six powerful intentions. And he says, Mike, you have to listen every morning right when you wake up because you're going from delta to theta brainwave. That's the best place for manifestation. And right before you go to bed, because you're going beta, alpha into theta, that's the best time to listen to manifest. What I know now, okay, is that I was reprogramming that subconscious mind that had been programmed by my parents, TV, society, for things that didn't serve me. Now I'm putting in there things that I truly want and desire, and I'm attaching a lot of emotion to them. So I'm reprogramming the subconscious mind. But at the same time, you know, Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, you have to understand energy, vibration, and frequency. So in this particular case, that's sound energy. You know, the Bible says God spoke this world into yeah. existence. He said, let, he said, let there be light. And there was light and it was good. The power of sound energy vibrating at a certain frequency. So I'm listening every morning, every night, that sound energy vibration frequency is going into the field of infinite possibilities, which is right here. Ladies and gentlemen, just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it's not here. I can send a uh, text message to Constance in Atlanta right now. And she'd get it within a second. What's that traveling on? Okay. The Bible calls it ether. 
uh, Tesla called it plasma, Chinese call it chi, Indians call it prana, but it's right here. This is where everything is manufactured before it comes into this physical reality. We have to understand the power of our thoughts and the power of our emotions. This is electrical energy. This is magnetic energy. Once we get that all in alignment with what we truly desire from our heart, and we move from the head to our heart and we live here. See, see, my mind can lie to you. My mind can trick you. My mind can get tricked. My heart is pure. My heart mm. can't lie. My heart can't steal from you. So we live here and then we use this supercomputer to create the plan to manifest what we truly want. As opposed to living here, which is the insane asylum. If this isn't closely monitored, this can get very dangerous living here. So, so we need to move <laughs> into this beautiful open heart and, and create the life of our dreams. I love that. And so, you know, as, as a, a African-American woman, I, 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 when I'm teaching, you know, minorities, I said, look, your spirituality and your subconscious mind is above your color. I mean, what's your take on that, Mike? Absolutely. You know, and, you know, I was a car dealer in Oakland, California for 26 years. And my, mm -hmm. my, my nonprofit foundation worked primarily 80% African-American women. Mm -hmm. and, and I really believe that, you know, they talk a lot about racism, but it's economic disparity that's been targeted to the African-American community. That's the unfairness of all this. And so... You know, the, the, the subconscious doesn't know white or black. The subconscious doesn't even judge. OK, so the subconscious only going to activate what we tell it. Now, if we tell it a bunch of racist BS, of course, it's going to get into our subconscious. Then we get triggered and we don't even know what's coming out of our mouth because 95 percent of our life we operate from the subconscious. That's why we need to clear out all this negative programming, all these limiting beliefs and install our own software into that program. So I love it when you said the subconscious doesn't know the difference between a lie and a truth. So so when you were writing out those intentions and how blessed are you and how how much does God love you to guide you to this man, Mike? I mean, are you do you ever just say, oh, my God, listen, I, I feel like. I'm the luckiest person on this earth. You know, I don't deserve what I've received, but I, I have tried my best to to give to others and yeah. to contribute to society. And, you know, I live on three different um, there's three different quotes that I love. One comes from Martin Luther King, who said mm -hmm. an insult to justice anywhere is an insult to justice everywhere. Mm -hmm. wow. There was a man in World War Two, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, that said a righteous man lives for the next generation. So I have wow. four kids, seven grandkids. And I think it was Edison that said evil exists because good men do nothing. So based mm -hmm. on this, you know, I feel compelled to try to serve people less fortunate, try to give them hope and inspiration. And that's why we're doing the Mountains of Hope. We're trying to create this beautiful place where people, primarily women of color that are suffering from breast cancer, that can come and learn to how to detox their body and learn to start to heal themselves because the Western medicine model doesn't work that effectively, in my opinion. So, you know, we're just learning about quantum physics. I say it just backs up what God has been doing the whole time. Just speak on that. And what would that look like in the life of listeners? So you have to understand that it's all energy. OK, so so and so we're we're trapped in this animal body. OK, we mm -hmm. urinate, we fornicate, we defecate, but we're a soul, we're spirit. And that's the duality. And so we need to rise above these lower energy um, centers in our body, the chakras, and get into this beautiful open heart and then use the power of our voice. Open our third eye, get connected to source through our crown chakra because God is right here. Actually, God is right inside of us. You know, it's interesting that we have these two eyes always looking out. We're always looking for God. We're looking for answers. And the truth is everything we need is within us already. So when you understand that it's all energy, and here's the big thing. See, matter is the illusion. When you study quantum physics and you study an atom, atom you realize that it's 99% space. And we're made up of atoms. Okay, so it looks, looks like skin and bones. Then you break it down, and then it's cells, and then it's molecules, and it's chemicals. Then it's atoms, then it's particles, and then it's just waves of energy. So if an atom is 99% space, this solidity is the illusion. So when we understand that, then we can access this right here which is the field of infinite possibilities. And we can use our beautiful mind to create a new reality. I love the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza and his. Oh yeah. Work. It's, it's profound. Right. And so he's always talking about if you want a different personal reality, 
you need to change the personality and what, what makes up our personality, what we think, what we feel and how we act. That's our personality. So if I want a different personal reality, I need to change the way I think, the way I feel and the way I act. And then it's become so much easier. Life is still tough and difficult, but once you understand how this system works, it's so much easier to play this game. So, so, you know, this is the law of attraction. So, you know, I got to ask you a law of attraction question, Mike. So, you know, so many listeners after 15 years, million of listeners, Constance, I've been listening to you, but I still haven't manifested. The law of attraction is not working for me. How would you break that down and answer that question for listeners? Well, you know, I hear the exact same thing. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So, okay. <laughs> and, and here's what I believe. People stop too quickly. We yeah. live in what I call the microwave generation. Okay. You know, back in the day, your grandma, my grandma, our parents, they used to spend hours cooking dinner. Okay. Now, now we pick up our phone. We call Uber Eats and <laughs> it's right here. Right. Or, or we get in the freezer and we put in a frozen, you know, dinner and put it in a microwave and it's right there. There's no patience in this world. People, especially these young kids, they can't focus very long. And so we give up on this law of attraction because here's the thing. Everybody's doing it already. If they would realize that with their thoughts, their thoughts are actually things that create. And but who's in charge of these thoughts? See, we think that we're all victims, right? The truth is none of us are victims. We are powerful creators. And when we acknowledge that now, the first step to acknowledging that is I have to take responsibility for everything in my life. Right now, I have some health issues. I did that, not my genetics, not my parents. No, I know what I did to my heart to put all this stress on it. I need to own that because when I own it, now I have my power back. When I have my power back, then I can fix it, right? But the problem is everybody's being programmed to be a victim. And when you're a victim, you have no power. So we need Thank to you. realize that we're a powerful creators. And I love your work. I was listening to some of your work this morning, okay? Talking a lot about purpose because people are running around and they have no purpose. Well, if you have no purpose, why are you here? So we got to find our purpose and we got to understand how powerful we are. And when we start living and fulfilling our purpose, life, life is still difficult. Life is still, you know, a challenge, but it becomes so much more worthwhile and deeper. And we become the best version of ourselves and we continue to evolve. We're either growing or dying. So I say, let's grow. Yeah. So let's break it all the way down for listeners, Mike. So people get clear. Let's talk about money. That's the number one question. Or you, you know the deal. Um, <laughs> so so if a listener or somebody watching this wants more money, let's just do it step by step. Yeah. They would do. I would ask him this. Number one. Mm -hmm. Why do you want the money? What does the money represent to you? OK, so if you ask me, OK, now there, here's the other thing. You know, we're at different stages of life. When I was a young man raising my children and bro going my career, money meant a lot more to me than it does now. Why? Because I have money and I don't need as much. Right. I'm not raising four children. Right. So we have to ask ourselves, what, what do we want the money for? What's its purpose? And for most of us, it's really money represents freedom. OK, so you have to understand that. What do I want freedom for? Now, if I have a really good purpose to help people less fortunate or to raise my beautiful children or to take care of my beautiful spouse and I'm using the money for a good purpose or if I if if I just want to create a better life, but a balanced better life, then I believe that money is very, very easy to manifest. So what I do is like, for example, I wanted to manifest my own business when it was one of my intentions with the mystery man. Right. So we write this powerful, powerful intention. I love that I own my own business. I love how my customers love our business. I love how our employees love working here, right? Then I find a business opportunity and the idea comes from out of nowhere because I'm listening to this intention every morning, every night, because now I have a goal. So let's say I'm, I'm trying to raise money. Let's put, put it in someone else's. Someone wants to raise money to put their child through college, which is a powerful a goal because they don't want the kid to have student debt, right? So they write a powerful attention. I love how this money is flowing into my life. I'm how I love how I'm able to use this money to send my beautiful child to this amazing university, which I know will bless her life. So I write this intention. I let's start listening every morning, every night. We talk about the law of attraction right now. Now that goes into the field of infinite possibilities. It meets like-minded thoughts. And all of a sudden, somebody looking to help someone go to college 
or this organization over here. And all of a sudden, things, ideas start to show up. The right book starts to show up. The right person starts to show up or the right money starts to show up. And you just have to have these intentions. You have to stay true to them and you have to spend five or 10 minutes every day listening and then asking questions, okay? Ask, when I journal, I ask, Heavenly Father, how can I generate money for this purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And ask questions and see what shows up. I journal, my journaling was like an act of prayer. So I'm Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, please give me wisdom on how to do this. So between the writing, the intention and listening and the journaling, answers will come, but we have to ask. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And so listeners, every night before they go to sleep, talk a little bit about that wonderful theta state. Yeah, that you okay. knew about back in 1982. Yeah. Uh, talk about that and why is that important and what is happening within us when we get in that state? Yeah, so, you know, the brain travels in different wavelengths. Right now, mm -hmm. you and I are in beta because we're fully conscious, we're fully awake, we're paying attention to what's going on. But when we're born and up to about age eight, our brain waves are in theta, okay? What does that mean? We're in a self-hypnotic trance. We are a sponge. We learn by watching who? Mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. We learn by, now, unfortunately, today, they're watching YouTube at two years old. But, but back then, we we're watching what mommy and daddy do and say, and we're picking it up in this super subconscious. You know, right now, your subconscious mind, mine, everybody listening is taking in over one million bits of information every second. One million. Wow. And then it delivers to our conscious mind only 40 bits of information. And it determines what it thinks we want. So if I walk around all day and go, nothing ever goes right, my life sucks, everything's always going bad, then that supercomputer, that subconscious is looking, looking for 40 bits of information to deliver that to me because it doesn't judge. It thinks that's what I want because that's what I walk around talking all day. But if I walk around, man, I love how wealthy I am. I love how abundant I am. Now that supercomputer is looking for bits of data to give. And then I start feeling it. You know, now we're going to work at Dr. Joe. I start feeling wealthy. Okay. And now my brain is making chemicals. I feel more wealthy. And then we're talking Talking about the law of attraction because now i'm vibrating at that frequency and all these other wealthy people start to show up with all these other great ideas and now we create this plan that is so good so so you talk about sound so for listeners i want you to really go back and, and listen to this because like he said some of you guys you just want a quick fix but like mike i mean every night and every morning i mean i don't feel it Sometimes I don't feel like anything is changing, but I put myself in that state. So what about sound, Mike? I mean, do they need to verbalize it or is just hearing it? Do they need to listen to some theta music, brainwave yeah. music to get them in that state? Great question. And I got the perfect solution. I know we've you do. We've created an app. It's on Apple's Apple iPhone store or the Google Play store, wherever you get your apps. And it's called the Creation Frequency. And it's a tape recorder, but we've already embedded the theta brainwave music wow. in there. We've we've also put the relaxation script there as well. But you can go to my website, MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com. We have the relaxation script there too. We we've recorded it, but we prefer that you do it in your own voice. The power of your own voice. That's yeah. the name of the new podcast as well. The power of your voice, right? So we use the power of our voice to create. That's what it's here for. And so so you get the creation frequency app. You write a powerful intention. Just start with one. If it's if six is too much, start with one. If you have a health issue, write a powerful health intention as if you're already healthy today and you feel it, you believe it, you see it. Then you record it in the app. You listen every morning, every night, and just watch. Just keep, just stay patient. Just do it and try to be as present and as awake and as aware as you can. And trust me, things will start. You'll notice little synchronicities. You'll notice little things will start to happen. And then boom, you'll gain some momentum. You'll gain some trust. You'll do more and more and more and your life will get better. I promise. So, you know, you personally mentioned right now, you, 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 you dealing with some health stuff. So are you doing exactly what you're sharing with us to do and seeing yeah. yourself? I don't know what you want to do, Mike, running in a five or six <laughs> marathons. So, so are you doing that right now? That's real vulnerability for listeners. Absolutely. So I have an electrical issue with my heart. Okay. So I've been through a lot. I've had a very stressful life. So I've put too much stress on my heart. 
And so I have a powerful intention to bring healing to my heart. But at the same time, I'm exploring Western medicine here in Colombia. I just mm -hmm. had a two and a half hour MRI, which wasn't any fun. I'm doing <laughs> another one in America on May 5th. So I'm looking at all my options. I'm looking at how I, I've now realized that I have heavy, heavy metal toxicity in my body. So I'm, and that causes heart issues. So I'm looking at how to get rid of that. Maybe I have some overgrowth yeast. So I'm detoxing my body that. So I'm working with the mind. I'm working with the heart. I'm working with the physical. I'm working with spiritual teachers and I'm working with medical doctors. So I'm looking at everything. Then I'm trusting my gut to make the right decision for me. Well, you know, when you said trusting your gut, you just, step right into my next question because you know a listener said well do when do how do i know if it's god or is it me when do i take action uh mike what would you say to people you know and i don't have to tell you this but we need to sit still you yeah. know and we need to contemplate and we need to pray. So, so one of the most successful things I've ever done in my life, I stumbled across it. It came from a guy named uh, Tony Robbins, who, who I was at one of his workshops and he said, a life worth living is worth recording. It turns out that quote comes from his mentor, Jim Rohn, who was a very mm -hmm. bright guy. So I started journaling, but I do it a very unique way. I start every morning, heavenly father, thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. for my health. Thank you for my wealth. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. Whatever I'm grateful for in that moment, I write it down as a holy prayer. Then I say, Heavenly Father, please give me wisdom on the following. What should I do about this situation with this child? What should I do about this situation with my wife? What should I do about this situation with my job? So I'm asking for wisdom from the creator of all. And I'm saying, hey, man, I need some help here. Give me wisdom on these things, right? And then I just set one little intention for the day of personal development. Uh, intention for example please help me to be more conscious and aware every second of every minute of every hour of today right or please help me to be more compassionate to my wife please help me to be more kind to my employees whatever it is one intention that i can review at the end of the day and then i end in love but it's in asking those questions and asking god to give us wisdom in these things now i'm co-creating my life with the creator of all. And that gives me a lot of comfort, but more importantly, I've gone back through my journals over 20 years and say, wow, 80% of the things I asked wisdom for, they just took care of themselves. 10% were miracles and 10% just worked out. And, and so it's beautiful to have a, something you can look back and say, hey, this really works. So let's talk about God and creation and manifestation and the law of retraction. So people say, Constance, you mean you a Christian and you believe in the law of attraction? I quote about 20 scriptures. And, and so what would you say to people who might be a little antsy around God, the law of attraction, et cetera? Yeah. So I, you know, obviously there's a God and obviously, yeah, yeah. obviously there's a creator right now. Here's where it gets difficult. There's 8 million religions, even in the mm -hmm. Christian faith. You mentioned growing up Baptist and, you know, I, I started as a Catholic and then I became born again then I became Presbyterian. And so and so and then, of course, those people that create these man-made religions, it a lot of times power and greed and lust because they're humans become a part of that and we lose the pure teachings of christ consciousness we lose the real message of love your neighbor as yourself the golden rule right and so we have to realize that as i said earlier i believe that god is within me you know we Absolutely. talk about accepting christ into our heart well i believe that the creator when when life was breathed into me when my soul and my spirit was placed into this animal body a part of god came with that so so my creator is here and and like you just said there's probably more than 20 quotes in the bible that, that this is how everything works like i said earlier god spoke this world into existence the bible says asking you shall be received and my favorite one is the is the law of reciprocity you can't outgive god and the more you give to others it comes back not 1x it comes back 10x 20x 50x so the more we give and serve one another the more the creator and god and spirit and christ consciousness serves us so it, you can't have one without the other. This is the way the system works. Yeah. I hear you talk a lot about contribution or serving, contributing to humanity. And you said, if you don't have any money, you can give a smile. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and so how can people, and when you give, what's, what happens in our lives when we're well, giving a, and it, serving and making contributions to others? It's unbelievable. One, we feel great. Okay. Who doesn't want to feel great? We, we feel when we're giving to someone, especially less fortunate, whether it's mm -hmm. time, energy, money, love, whatever it is, we're going to feel better. And, and, and so many people are full of anxiety today or depression or running around with alcohol, drugs, sex, gambling problem, all these issues, because we're, the, we're so consumed with ourself right now. You know, everybody in the world is either a coach a podcaster or an influencer, right? And what, what, who's doing something in this world today, right? So mm -hmm. we need to go out there and, and there's so many lonely people and there's so much poverty. There's so just, go, you can go to, you know, you're in Atlanta, I'm from Oakland. I mean, you mm -hmm. go to these cities, there's so much we can do to help. Go to a hospital, go to a, a place where the elderly live and don't have any visitors, especially through this COVID thing. And people are suffering, right? So we, we when we give of ourselves, you know, I don't give to get, but, but every time I give, I get, and it's just, it's, it's like the law of gravity. I could drop something that's going to fall to the ground. If it's heavier every time, same with the law of reciprocity, I give and I receive, and I might give money to you and I might get this great, beautiful love or relationship over here. And I might give love over here and receive this gift of money over here. It's not, you know, it's not equal, but giving is giving and receiving is receiving. And so the more you give, the more you're blessed. It's that simple. Yeah. Somebody asked me, you guys know this is my 15th year. I'm like, only by the grace of God every week. <laughs> and, and they said, well, are you being paid for that? I'm like, nope, but I am being paid. I have been, I, I mean, my life has been enriched people all over the world. I'm so rich in so many areas. And yeah. I just, I appreciate you saying that because a lot of people may feel stuck, but man, you can give a smile. You never know what people are going through. Exactly. Amen. So, so what's your take on, uh, you mentioned, I want to back up a, about our emotions, um, yeah. that when you're writing that intention, because I wrote an intention before we started the show today uh -huh. and I have been meditating on, I said, Mike and I are going to have a great show, great connection and, and, and emotionally and vibrationally, I felt that. So when you write out your intentions, what would you say to listeners about the emotional aspect of that? That's the magnetism. That's the magnetic field that's going to draw back that intention. So you're you're a naturally joyful, loving, kind, beautiful woman, right? So every intention that you write is going to have that kind of emotion attached to it, right? But not all of us are like that. Some of us are working through some deep, serious issues, and especially emotionally, right? So, for example, my my number one intention right now is building this beautiful healing retreat center here in Columbia, right? Mm -hmm. So I've attached so much love to, to this project and so much gratitude that I have the, the wherewithal to even pull it off. And what I when it becomes difficult and does become difficult that life, you know, we create these beautiful intentions, but sometimes there's challenges that come with them. Right. So here's what I do. I visualize myself getting a beautiful hug from one of our guests that came there with a physical ailment or a mental ailment or emotional ailment and are now healed. And they say, Oh my gosh, I've learned so much here. I've, I feel so much better energetically. I am free of this pain and suffering that was inside of my heart for so long. And they're hugging me and tears are flowing down their cheeks. Tears are flowing. So I go there and I feel that moment. I wow. And by feeling that, I am drawn more to it and it's drawn towards me. There's the law of attraction right there. I'm putting this into the field and the field is bringing it closer to me and it's taking me closer to that. That's the law of attraction. You know, Mike, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of hypnotized when I listen to you. I've got to remember I'm doing a show because just what you said, you know, people getting an image of whatever their intention is already having it and feeling that. It's just so uh -oh. powerful. Guys, we had a little connection issue, but we back. We are connected. <laughs> I said that intention <laughs> at the beginning of the show. So, so Mike, you know, one of my friends said, you've got to ask Mike this question about love and I attracting love. I'm like, but it all works the same. But since she yeah. 
asked me to ask you, you know, the second question that you and I get, how can I find my soulmate? Or, oh, Constance, I'm really ready for love. What would you say to that? I know the same thing, but I want them to hear from you. So by the way, sometimes that's the first question that they're trying to manifest, right? It's not always money. A lot of times it's love first, right? Right. So, uh, or, or relationship. So, cause Hey, who wants to be alone? Let's face it. You know, life is better when it's shared with someone but when we can learn to become whole independently by ourselves and realize that everything that we need is already within us then then we're going to vibrate at this frequency of wholeness and not need see when you're vibrating at a, a need if I, people pick that up they might yeah. not be able to articulate it but they feel it they go oh there's thing this person needs something they don't know what it is you need my money you need my love what you, you you need what do you need right when you're coming from a place of love and service and you're vibrating at that frequency then you're going to attract people that are vibrating at the same frequency which is love and giving and service and when you start vibrating that frequency now you're around all these your your whole um pool of possibilities have opened up and you've gotten rid of all the needy people because when you're vibrating at a at a need basis of frequency that's what you're going to attract and so needy people end up with needy people but but they never become the best version of themselves so pretty soon the beginning that's fun and exciting opposite and all that but then after a while it becomes old and and, and and it just doesn't work but when I vibrated of, of love and contribution and service to one another and then conscious and aware, then that's what I attract. And so that's what I'm going to choose from. Right. And so, and don't, once again, don't stop to learn. The other thing is that I say, because we're always, we, when it comes to relationships, we tend to be very, very specific in what we're looking for, mm -hmm. which I think is great. So for in my case, for example, say, okay, I'm looking for a dark haired woman, dark skinned woman, um, this particular size or, you know, t height or whatever, it's okay to be specific, but then be totally flexible. Okay. Mm. Don't try to control what shows up. It's okay to tell the subconscious. It's okay to tell God. It's okay to tell the universe what you want, what you think you want, but then be totally flexible. So be specific as much as possible, and then be willing to open your mind, open your heart and see what shows up without judgment is the judgment that gets us into trouble. That's what I would say. In the track and work. Well, Mike, you are the man. Tell us your website. And uh, I know you got all kind of goodies on there that people can purchase and look at. I'm going to encourage all my listeners to get that app. I'm going to put it on my phone today the app and is download free. it. Okay. The, the, app, the app is free. So I encourage you to get that. Uh, my YouTube channel, Mike Murphy Unfiltered on YouTube. There's a lot of free stuff there. You can figure all this out. And, and my website, which is MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com. And by the way, if you go there, I, I'd like to give your listeners a, a gift. Go to MikeMurphyUnfiltered.com forward slash gift, and we will send you the um, the online course of how to write a powerful intention, how to manifest it. Um, my books are for sale there. Our other online course, The Creation Frequencies, for sale there. Then our powerful retreat center called Mountains of Hope in Medellin, Colombia. It's unbelievable. It's mountainsofhope.com. And then, of course, dear and near to my heart is our nonprofit foundation, which is love from Margo, M A R G O T dot org. And we give one scholarship away a month to people that have a real need. So if you want to apply, you go to lovefrommargo.org. If you don't have any money, but you have a serious physical, mental, emotional going on in your life, and we think we can help you. Uh, you may be qualified to come down for free and to attend our retreat. So that's what I have going on. So, Mike, you're living a purposeful life. You know that, right? Do you feel it every day? I know every day, sometimes in the routine of things, it may not feel purposeful. Yeah. I, do you I mean, feel I, that? I really, yes, ma'am, I do. And it, it has to do with my second wife, Margo, who, who was just, she loved me when I didn't even know how to love myself. And mm -hmm. it was through her death and the, and the suffering that she went through nine year battle with breast cancer from age 29 to 38. It was her, you know, on December 1st, 2010, the doctor said, Margo, unfortunately the cancer spread to the lining of your brain. Mm -hmm. If you do nothing, you have six weeks to live. And if you treat it, you have six months. And that's the premise of my book, living in color. We chronicle those six months with flashbacks into our love story, but it was her and her life. And then I met a woman right after she passed named Amanda, 
an African-American woman that had stage breast cancer. And so it was Margot's love that opened my heart, especially her death that really opened my heart. And then it was Amanda's injustice in the medical system that caused me to start mm. the love for Margot Foundation and to work with these women below the poverty line. So I, I am so blessed and I realize I'm on purpose and I'm super grateful for that. So glad we connected. When I saw the email from your PR person, I said, who is this man? I could feel the vibration in the email. I'm like, I want to interview him. And I, awesome. uh, guys, you got to know, I get tons of email. But when I saw his, I'm like, he's the man. So thank you so much. Everybody go to his website, download that free app. I'm going to do it and really practice exactly and be very intentional about what you desire. And just watch the mirac mir miraculous happen. It's Amen. been an honor, and thank, Mike. And let me just say thank you for everything that you're doing. I know how hard you work at this. I know how difficult it is. I know how much time and energy and effort, but more importantly, how much love you put into it. I can feel it. And I'm super grateful and honored to be on your show. So thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. So everybody make a decision to have a great week because you know you really do create your own reality. Have a great week. <laughs>